Several best of caller questions shows, and they move at a pre- at a faster pace. So we typically can fit in more questions and unbiased answers. So hopefully you'll tune in, or I think you'll enjoy it. And anyways, I'm Steve Peasley. I'm here today to help you become a better investor, as I am here every day or most days. And I can do that by giving you data and perspective developed for more than 20 years, more than 40 years, if you want to know the truth. I'm investing experience um, on the radio for more than 20 years. Uh, anyways, uh, of course, I'm going to blend in the comments with what you, the listener, want to talk about. We do that every day. It is a call-in show. So your questions are, are, the, are, are primary. Your questions are. You set the table. Make you a vital part of the show, as you know. And here on Invest Talk, we do have no hidden agenda. We don't. We work with very hard to give you unbiased guidance. And the goal is enabling you to move forward on a path to successful investing. That's what our goal is. We want you to become financially independent. You can do that. It's not impossible. People think it is because they think mostly because they want to get rich quick. You can't, investing is not a get rich quick plan. It's not. It's get rich slow. And you can do it. And of course, we do that by taking your questions. And the phone lines are always open. The number is 888-99-CHART. 888-992-4278. Today, my focus point looks at a story. A recession may be coming, but some consumers are already feeling pain. An economist and portfolio strategist at New York Life says aggregate data for the broader economy shows a bifurcation between lower and middle income segments of consumer spending. So we'll find we'll, we'll get we'll delve into that. We'll get to some very interesting facts. Time permitting, I'm also going to talk about uh, China's growth and how it is the slowest it's been in 50 years. I want to talk about Google and how it's trying to get people to come back to work, come back to the office. I don't think it's just Google. That's why I'm talking about this happened to be an article about Google, but it's happening in other tech companies also. And J.P. Morgan model says if the bond market is correct, stocks should lose about 20% of value. And then there's BNP. And what are they talking about? They're, they, they're talking about quantitative tightening and what's going to happen. Because we've been having quantitative tightening for well over a year, year and a half now, by the Federal Reserve. What's the result of that? What is typically the result of that? We're in some unusual times, but, you know, we still have to deal with them. We still have to understand what's going on. Okay. The market today was up. Dow was up 43 points, the Nasdaq up 21, and the S&P up 5. Not a lot, but up. The market's been pretty healthy, and that makes me a bit nervous. I don't know about you. makes me a bit nervous that the market is healthy. We have an inverted yield curve, and we've had it for a year and a half or so, and that's not normal. That is not normal, so it makes me nervous. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our first caller question. Yeah, hi, Steve. This is Nick in uh, Hayward, California. I uh, wanted to get your thoughts on uh, this stock called uh, Palantir, P like Paul, L, T like Tom, R like Robert. Is it appropriate time to get in uh, for some, or is it too late? I would appreciate your uh, input and love your show. Great show. Thank you very much. This is Palantir Technologies, develop software for institutions to protect individual privacy uh, and prevent the misuse of information. I do like the sector. It's out of Denver, Colorado. It's a thirty, almost $32 billion company, and I think you're a bit late for the run. I mean, it ran from around $6 to today. It's uh, six, six, fifteen oh two. Okay, and it did that in just a few weeks. Run up that. That's a huge return. Well, it, it's just too much in a short period of time. You, you'd be safer to wait for a pullback. The earnings are going to be twenty-one cents a share coming up this year. That's from six cents last year, and twenty-four cents a share next year. But it's a fifteen-dollar stock. 
that tells you the forward P.E. is like 70. Now, the sales growth is 18% in the most recent quarter, and that was the March quarter. The quarter before that was 17%, and that's the lowest growth it's had in two years. Been higher growth before that. But it's still only, you know, this company has, does about $2 billion in sales, and it's a $32 billion company. Okay, that's, from a price-to-sales ratio, that's pretty high. Okay, selling at 12 and a half times book value, uh, it's just too expensive. Return on equity is only 6%. That's weak. And, and cash flow is only $0.08 cents a share. The good thing is ma- management owns 7%. Mutual funds have been slowly buying. Uh, I just think it's not, this is not the time to buy this stock. It's not. Time to buy is when you didn't like it, when no one likes it, when it was in the six to eight dollar range. That's when you buy it, and it was that for oh, close on to six months. It was in that range. We're going to take a quick break. Please remember that you can call Invest Talk anytime. Leave your question on the voice bank, or if you're listening live via live stream or at twelve twenty radio in the San Francisco Bay Area, Bay Area, you can call right now. We're live eight 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 ninety nine chart. KPP Financial invites you to join us for a new Invest Talk Wealth Webinar: Rates and Real Estate. You'll gain valuable investing insights for the commercial and residential real estate markets of twenty twenty three. We will also explore the world of REITs and delve into a comprehensive analysis of the Deferred Sales Trust, a real estate tax deferral strategy. The Invest Talk Wealth Webinar will take place on Wednesday, June 28th from 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific Time. And it will be led by Invest Talk host Justin Klein, along with KPP Financial Portfolio Manager Luke Guerrero. This complimentary webinar is your opportunity to learn from top finance experts in the industry. So go to investtalk.com, register for this free wealth webinar, Rates and Real Estate. Everybody wants a secure financial future, but getting there takes strategy, discipline, and the right information. That means you'll have finance and investment questions. Justin Klein and Steve Peasley are ready to provide their unbiased answers. So don't forget to call InvestTalk, 888-99-CHART. Okay, my focus point looks at the story, a recession may be coming, but some consumers are already feeling pain. This is from an economist, a portfolio strategist at New York Life. Uh, he says aggregate data for the broader economy shows a bifurcation between lower and middle income segments of consumer spending. And you know, our economy is a consumer driven economy. 66% of the economy is based on what the consumers do. And spending or not spending drives us into expanding our economy or shrinking our economy. For instance, Target warned last month of sluggish sales, and Dollar General's stock plunged on June 1st after the discount retailer slashed its four-year outlook, four, uh, full-year outlook. On the other hand, if you're an airline, you're doing great. American Airlines raised its earning guidance on May 31st, citing stronger demand and cheaper fuel. So... What's going on here? It, it, we are getting confusing numbers from the economic, different economic studies that we do every month and the reports that we get every month. They're a little bit confusing. Uh, the housing market looked like it was pretty healthy, and that's really great. Our housing market is a, 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 a pillar of strength in our economy. New home sales are actually trending upward in recent months. Whereas uh, existing home sales, falling. Now, the trick there is maybe that's because, you know, people don't want to give up their 2 to 3% 30-year mortgages. And so they're not going to go out and buy another house and then get stuck with a 6% mortgage. So what does that do? Maybe they're not selling their houses. It looks like they don't want to put the houses on the market, and therefore we have a housing shortage. 
So it's kind of odd. It really is odd. Um, so different things are causing different issues. Uh, labor market, we had a very strong growth in our jobs last last uh, just last week, three hundred thirty nine thousand new jobs. Same time at the same time, with that as a lagging indicator, right? It's per May. The weekly uh, unemployment claims, which is a leading economic uh, indicator, surprisingly uh, grew more three much higher than they expected. Two hundred sixty one thousand this week. That was yesterday, reported yesterday, not for last week, actually, reported this week, yesterday. So we got confusing things, and just remember, yesterday we talked about China's exports that plunged 7.5% in May, far more than expected. So it's not just here, us, there's confusion in economies, but it looks like it wants to contract but we've been saying that for some time. Experts have been saying it. I've been saying it. I mean, I think you know the Federal Reserve is going to is still raising rates. They may pause on this next meeting. You know, there's a, it's like a coin toss whether they're going to pause or raise rates again another quarter percent. I think it's foolish if they do. They shouldn't. We still have an inverted yield curve. These things are these you know the inverted yield curve is always is pointing to a recession, and it's been inverted for well over a year. That's not normal. <laughs> so you can see, and of course Goldman Sachs, I told you yesterday or the day before, uh, dropped their recession predict probability from thirty five percent to twenty five percent this year. On the other hand, one of the big houses said that there's going to be a recession by the end of the year. You see what I mean? It's it's confusing. It's very confusing. No one really knows. We really don't. Let's keep things moving and pivot back to the voice bank. The next question came in earlier from listener in San Francisco, the Bay Area. 888-99-CHART. Hi, this is Romero from the Bay Area. I was calling in regards to Johnson & Johnson and Amazon. I currently have Johnson & Johnson, and I've been thinking about selling out of it and looking into more of a growth company. And Amazon has been catching my eye. I understand that Amazon has gone up quite a bit, maybe I think around over 40% this past year. If I do decide to sell out of Johnson & Johnson, at what price point do you recommend I start dipping into Amazon? Any comments or suggestions would greatly be appreciated. Thank you. I think Amazon's got to pull back into the sub-100 level. It's at 123 to be a buy. It's already jumped up. You're already a bit late. You know, I, I think you're late. And Johnson Johnson, these are two totally different kinds of companies. So, you know, buying, selling one, buying another in a portfolio depends on what your balance of your portfolio is. Johnson Johnson is a very slow growth, very steady, pays a 3% dividend. Four and fifteen billion dollar company, very big. So don't have much debt. Very well run, conservative, thirty six percent return on equity, and you're never going to get huge growth and huge price appreciation on the stock. Uh, I, and I, frankly, I think you should hold on to Johnson Johnson. I like Amazon too. I just don't know if I like it at this price. It's too, you know, it's already moved up from its what mid eighties now. And that was when to buy it. That's when it looked attractive, you know, as far as a price. And it, it amazes me that no one wants to buy things when they're on sale. No one buys things when they're weak and look like that they're getting ready to jump. They, you know, and they, they deserve it because of earnings. They just don't. And they wait till it goes up and then it's too late. We're headed into a break. Justin and I are happy to play your recorded voice paint questions, but we love taking the live calls, as you know. So our numbers are never changes and they're always open, 888-99-CHART. One of the things that you keep talking about, but how do you calculate valuation or how do I get that type of information when I'm looking at a stock? Thank you. Well, 
you know, we buy data, we meaning KPP Financial, we buy data and we put in our own calculations in there. But there's some easier ways and quick and dirty methods to evaluate stocks. But you do have to do it by sector. You got to understand the sector um, sector averages and norms. Uh, for instance, the S&P 500, the norm over a long period is about 15 PE ratio, right? Okay, so you can multiply 15 times next year's earnings estimate and you come up with an estimate of what that company could be worth. But if it's a growth company versus a value company, it would be much higher than 15 if it's growth and much lower than 15 if it's value. Okay, then, so you got to understand the sectors and valuations. But, you know, the quick and dirty method we also use is you can take the um, earnings and multiply it times the sales growth. Uh, this works great for a growth company because it will give you a higher valuation if the growth is very strong. So, for instance, they're going to make $2 a share and they're growing 30% per quarter or 30% per year. Um, year over year, you can multiple 30 times $2. You come up with a $60 valuation, okay? Uh, so that's a growth company. But if you look at Amazon, Amazon's PE4, PE is 76. Right now, that seems a little excessive to me. But I think if it was around 50, I might feel more comfortable. Why? Well, because their they, they're, their five-year average is 42 to 301, their P.E. ratio. So using the P.E. is one way to do it. Also, price-to-sales ratios can be used. Uh, and, and, you know, you got to consider debt. It's not simple. If it was simple, everybody would do it. Everybody just plug in the formulas and we all would be happy. doesn't work that way. So it's much more difficult than just say this is how you do it. Okay? One of the ways I do it, five, last five-year P.E. ratio range, multiply the low times next year's earnings and the high by next year's earnings, and you can get a range of what the price should be. That will work. Doesn't work so great on very high-growth companies. Let's go to Nick in Manhattan Beach, California. Hi, Nick. Hello, Steve. Happy Friday to you. Thank you. I am uh, calling in about Shutterstock. Okay. SSTK. I wanted you to get your take on the company's operating metrics, um, their financial okay performance in the last three to five years on a profitability yeah. basis, and okay. uh, whether you think you know this current price is, is a good time to buy, given that it's at pretty low valuation multiples relative to its history. Thanks. Yeah, I kind of I kind of think it, you're right. It's relatively to its history, this valuation is pretty good. Shutterstock Company out of New York, New York, New York, New York City, operates online marketplace for licensed commercial digital imagery for sale to media and marketing agency. It's a $1.7 billion company. It's going to make $2.46 next year and made three eighty seven dollars last year. So that's a 37% drop. And then it's going to make two eighty seven dollars next year, another 17% increase. Um, looking at the valuations, growth, sales growth is in the high single digits now, 8 9 10%. Okay, uh, management owns 36% of the company, which is huge. And mutual funds are pretty much steady. About 460, 470 of them own this company. The peak was around $120, and that was in September of 21 or so, in that area, September, October. And then it fell all the way down to sub-50, like $45, $48 a share. Uh, and that's a September of of 22, right? Okay, and now, and then it rose back up to 80, and now it's back to 49. So, it looks to me, this is where the support area is, in the high 40s, and it's at 49 now. So, I kind of like it on the chart that this might be a good place to buy if you wanted to get into the stock. Um, so, I I like it. I, the, the return of equity is very high at 31%, so that's really great. Doesn't have hardly any debt. Management owns a huge amount and also all positive. And it does pay a 2.2% dividend. So I think the price where it is now is a good price. Can it fall more? Of course. Uh, back in 2020, in that area, the low was in the high 20s, low 30s. 
So that I that could happen again, but I don't think so. I think the mid to high 40s is where it's going to stop falling. Okay, good luck with it. I hope it works for you. Okay, KPP Financial is producing a new Invest Talk Wealth webinar, and you are invited to join us. There is no cost, of course. The Invest Talk Wealth webinar rates in real estate. Wait, rates in real estate is scheduled for Wednesday, June 28th at 2 p.m. Pacific time. You will gain valuable investing insights for the commercial and residential real estate markets. So we'd like you to join if you would. It's you know, it's different these days. Okay, okay, and we're going to explore REITs as well. You know, and look at real estate tax deferred strategies. The webinar will be led by Justin Klein and financial portfolio man, uh, manager Luke Guerrero. So hope you'll be there. It's free. I'll take a break right now. We'll call 888-99-CHART. Steve Peasley is here and ready to take your calls live. Invest Talk, 888-99-CHART. 888-992-4278, everybody. Give me a call. It is Friday, and you know on Fridays, I always give you a quick rundown on some of the key benchmark numbers. Two-year treasury paying 4.58%. That's pretty good. Was well, 4.49% last week. 4.5% two weeks ago. But the key here is about a year and a half ago, 76 weeks ago, it was paying 0.64%. So just a little over half a percent, or close to two-thirds of one percent, not even one. The 10-year Treasury pays 3.7. Right now, remember, two years, 4.5, and the 10 years, 3.7. 75 weeks ago, it was 1.7%. Remember, the two-year was paying 0.64 and 74, 75 weeks ago, and the 10 years paying 1.7. That's a normal curve when the shorter term treasury pays less than the longer term. When it's inverted, like it is now, today, where the short term pays more than the long term, that's not a healthy environment for the economy. And ever that, whenever that has happened in the past, a recession followed. And we've been this way well over a year. We're about a year and a half now, right? Not normal. Gold, uh, 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 1,961 cents an ounce. Uh, last week, it was 1,949. Uh, three weeks ago, it was 1,981. So if you go way back a little over a year, it was 1,806. So it's a little bit higher than it was, just not very much. Silver, $24.30 an ounce today. Last week, it was 23.62. A little over a year ago, it was 23.94. Hardly moved at all in a little over a year. So it just makes it odd, right? Oil is seven, selling for $70 at 71 cents a barrel. Remember, Saudi Arabia doesn't like it, and they're cutting production in July. Uh, by a million dollars, million barrels a day, so they can get the price up. That's what their attempt is, is to get the price up. So, of course, they can make more money since that's their primary, almost their only export is oil. So, seventy dollars and seventy-one cents barrel is not that expensive. Last week was seventy-one ninety-six. Seventy-four weeks ago was sixty-six sixty-two, and now it's seventy. From 67 to 70 in a year, uh, longer than a year, a year and a quarter or so. Gasoline, the national average is $3.58. Last week it was $3.56, up a couple of pennies. It should be coming down, really, if you want to know the truth. Um, in California, the average is $4.89. I'm paying over $5 here in South Orange County, $5 plus a barrel, I mean a gallon of gasoline. New York, New York, $3.69 a gallon. Mm -hmm. That's $1.20 cheaper than in California. Tell me why California is so expensive. There's absolutely no reason why it's more expensive. You know, it shouldn't be anyways. The reason is political. 
not because of the gas. Remember, everywhere, uh, uh, it's $70.71 cents a barrel. So why are we paying a dollar twenty more, you know, if, if than New York? See, it makes no sense other than taxes, you know, and political problems that driving this price up. And it hurts the the, the, the it hurts the poorest and middle class people the most. It hurts them the most, paying that kind of price. Coming up on KPP Premium Newsletter, I'll be talking about it at halfway. You know, I'm, 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 no, that'll be coming up. We already have passed the halfway. This show's going pretty up fast. I'm going to play a caller, caller question now from 888-99-CHART. Hi, this is Adrian from Texas, and I had a question regarding KDP, Curry, Dr. Pepper. It's been going down, 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 down. Is it a good time, based on the financials, to get in? Makes, uh, makes over 125 brands of carbonated soft drinks, juices, ready-to-drink teas, and other beverages in North America. Um, they just changed. Uh, no, that was some time ago. That's not a problem. They're going to make $1.78 a share this year from $1.68 last year. And this share price has been going up pretty steady. Uh, earnings per share, I mean. Uh, and next year it's going to be $1.91. But it's not. It's steady. It's not a huge growth. It's not going to ever be a huge growth. Uh, they have only a return, uh, return equity is only 10%, which is kind of low. Uh, they pay a 2.6% dividend. Forward-looking PE is 17, and the range for the last five years is 4 to 37. So you can't say it's cheap. Sales are growing uh, 9 to 12% per quarter. Not too bad. And the stock has not moved very much. Uh, it's not a very exciting stock. You got to be willing to just accept the dividend and hope for some capital appreciation. I mean, the stock has been as high as 126 back in uh, 2018, but more realistic uh, and recent history is going to be around uh, 40 40 dollars a share, and it's at 31 31 right now, 31 dollars and 31 cents. So that's more realistic, forty dollars a share, which is not bad. You know that'd be in what um, uh, twenty, thirty percent price appreciation. But who knows when it'll get there? Might take a long time. That is a KDP Curry Dr Pepper. The KBP Premium Newsletter was finished today, and it will go out to the be distributed tomorrow to the subscribers tomorrow morning. And here is a little review of it. Uh, the market conditions section. The S&P 500 index hit a 13-month high midway through the trading day on Friday as the week saw the most watched U.S. index enter a technical bull market, up 20% from its bear market lows. Okay. The rally was powered by Tesla's strong performance in the wake of the announcement regarding a deal made with General Motors to license Tesla's fleet of superchargers. Even as the S&P 500 continues to climb, the breadth, which we've talked about here on the show, the breadth of the rally is near historic lows, as the most gains have been focused among the handful of mega cap tech names. So, you're probably wondering, well, gee, how come my portfolio is not doing that great? Because you didn't have those handful of mega cap st- technology stocks, and that's all, nothing else. You didn't, if you had anything else, you're underperforming. So if you properly diversified, you severely underperform. Because you know, if you put all your money in those 10 tech names, you would have outperformed. Now, those stocks are way overvalued. They're going to get punished at some point. So, you got to be careful. The rally was powered by you know, Tesla, as I said, and it's one of the bigger companies moved. As equity markets continue to rise, this was a rough week for digital assets, with prices rapidly falling in the aftermath of the announcement from the SEC that it has sued Beyonce and Coinbase for violating U.S. securities laws and running illegal unregistered exchanges. And they are that, aren't they? They're acting as an exchange for you to trade your cryptocurrencies. 
Well, that's an exchange. You got to be approved by the SEC. You can't just do it. <laughs> so they're going to be in trouble. And they are in trouble. With no economic news or major activity this week, investors are generally trading with a muted volume as market participants await the Federal Reserve's policy rate decision next week. So we're going to know if the rate's going to go up or down or stay the same. On the longer end of the curve, the hope for a rate cut this year seems to be losing steam as higher-than-expected inflation numbers came from Canada, and a tighter-than-expected job market continues to run hot. So there's a lot more commentary there, uh, uh, a lot more detail in the, the market conditions section of the newsletter. And I think it would be very helpful for you. In the stock ideas section, we highlighted a holding company which gets 85% of its revenue from online ad sales. In fact, it holds 92% share of the primary market. It acts both unsympathetic and sympathetic, systematic. It aces both unsystematic and systematic risk along with the rest of the tech sector. The company could see a pullback, and if you don't know what this one is, you're not paying attention. Let me mention it again. 85% of its revenue from online ad sales. In fact, it holds 92% share of the primary market that it's in. We all know who that is, don't we? We name names, of course, in the newsletter, but I would wait for a pullback on that particular stock. Okay, I, I would. We also looked at a closed-in mutual fund, Trust, which was created to invest and hold most or all its assets in physical gold bullion. The company's investment objective is to provide an exchange-traded investment alternative for investors interested in holding physical gold bullion without the inconvenience that is typical of a direct investment in physical gold. You know, if you buy gold yourself, you have to pay a commission to buy it, uh, and you have to pay a commission to sell it. And those commissions can be pretty darn stiff. I mean, upwards up to, what, 7 to 10% sometimes. But if you wanted to buy an ETF that buys gold, we have one in the newsletter. I think that's a, and, of course, we always name and give you names and, and symbols and stuff. Now, gold is a great hedge against market volatility. So if you're looking for market volatility, the dollar has been very, very strong. Okay, much stronger than you would think with the interest rates rising that, as fast as we've risen them. And the Fed has risen the interest rates. And the dollar still maintained its strength. Seems odd because it's not normal. Usually when the Fed raises rates, it's trying to slow the economy, trying to push us into a recession gently. And that when that happens, gold usually goes up in value. Gold goes up in value on inflation, and we have lots of inflation. Re only recently has it come down, but gold did not move. Kind of stayed the same. Hmm. You can subscribe on the, anytime you want at investtalk.com. That's investtalk with two T's, dot com. Okay? So, now, talking about the economy and everything else that's going on, China's growth, uh, growth is at its lowest level in 50 years. Their PMI for May fell for the eighth month in a row. Okay, recent numbers showing China's economy rapidly weakening. And they're probably going to stimulate their economy again. The government is going to try to do something, lower interest rates, pump money into somewhere. They're going to do that. Their economy is weakening. Remember yesterday we just talked about their uh, their their ex exports falling. I mean, they're, they're having more trouble than we're seeing. And remember, China is the second largest economy by far, to, only second to us. We're, what, $23 trillion or so, and they're, what, $14, $15, $16 trillion or so. And then the next and the closest economies are like 5 or $6 trillion. Okay? And just to give you some scale, we're talking about countries here. But if you look at Apple... All by itself, one company, one stock, their size, market cap, is $2.8 trillion. $2.8 trillion. <laughs> That gives you some scope as to how big they really are. 
I mean, we're not, and Apple's not all by itself. Uh, how about Amazon? Uh, Amazon is, I think, one, yeah, 1 1.2 trillion. Okay, how about, I don't know, Google? Take a look at Google. What are they? 1.5 trillion. Think how big these companies are. And this is why these handful of stocks have driven the market. They're so big compared to the rest of the stocks in their index. So these few handful of companies, as we mentioned in the newsletter, have been driven the market uh, indexes up, whereas most of the other stocks are not in that same index. Kind of interesting dynamic there. Okay, let's go easy. One more quick question now. Hi, Steve. You have a great show. My question is on the stock UHT, Universal Health Realty Income. I was just wondering what your thought would be. And again, this is Steve from Virginia. Thank you. Good name, Steve. Universal Health Realty is a REIT that invests in health care, human services related facilities with 76 properties. It's kind of small. It's only a $684 million company. I, I like my REITs to be a bit bigger than that. Um, they uh, they pay a 5.8% dividend yield, which is good. The stock has fallen sharply. It was $120 two, three years ago. 2020, it was $120 a share. Now it's forty nine fifty nine. Had a great week this week, up strongly this week. Uh, to return on equity is only 9%, which is kind of low. Cash flow is strong at $3.49. Uh, they have 150% debt, management owns 2%, mutual funds have been slowly selling, and sales have been growing 5 to 10%. Um, and I, I, I think, you know, it's a, I like the, where it is. I like a lot where it is. But there's a, other REITs in that area I like a little better because they fell harder <laughs> and they have... Better, much better yields. I buy a, you buy a REIT for its yield, uh, so you might want to look around and see if you can find a better one. But this is a good one. U H T. That's a good one. I, I wouldn't hurt my feelings if you invested in that. This is Invest Talk. I'm Steve Peasley. We have one goal here, everybody, and that's to help you achieve financial freedom. And our work will continue right after this break. So get your questions in now. Eight 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 ninety nine chart. Now is a good time to call Invest Talk. A warrant is a right to buy shares of stocks at a certain price. Got a question for Steve or Justin? 888-99 chart. You've got finance and investment questions, and Justin Klein and Steve Peasley are ready with their unbiased answers. Don't forget to call Invest Talk 888-99-CHART. Hello, Steve and Justin. This is Matt from Minneapolis. I have a quick question for you, gentlemen, please. Um, I'm looking at a company, uh, Carlyle Company it is. I think the ticker symbol is CSL, and I think it pays a dividend also. I'm not sure if it pays a good one or not, but um, it's a quality company, I know. I think it's was it in the housing building sector or something? I know a couple months ago I was listening to the show here and Steve thought it was a quality company, but at that time it was selling for like 280 something and he felt that was too high. I've been having it on my watch list. I noticed it fell down here on pullbacks down to the two teens, and now it's been coming up here pretty good here the last couple weeks, last two, three weeks. And it's in the 230s right now. And I'm wondering, is this a good time to pick it up here before it gets up too high and I can still capture part of the gain here as it goes back up? Thanks for your information. I'll be waiting to listen on the show. Have a good day. I think that was a pretty good synopsis of what's going on and what we talked about. This is a car law company, symbol CSL out of Scottsdale. Manufactures thermoplastic roofing systems, off-highway braking systems, and friction products worldwide. It's a, almost a $12 billion company. It's going to make $18.05 this year, then nineteen eighty-five next year. So down 10% this year, rebound 10% next year, pays a 1.3% dividend. 
And what I like is you're exactly right. I thought it was too expensive. I remember talking about it and said, wait till it falls down to, you know, the 230 level. And it fell actually to the mid 220 something uh, before it started back up. And now it's at 232. Uh, it, the forward PE is 12. The five year range is 10 to 31. Return equity is very good at 37%. Cash flow is very high at $22.63. Management owns 1%. Mutual funds are buying. There was 862 a year ago. Now there's 1,188. Now, you want to look for anything. Fundamentally, it looks great. Not much debt. The negative is in the most recent quarter, sales fell hard. And I would like to know why. Other quarters, they, their, their sales were always growing. So it looks like there's some weakness in their sales. And I wonder if that's just a one quarter blip or is there something going on there? But I think it's the 220s to 230s was a very good place to buy. And you're not too late at 232. I don't think so. Now, if the economy goes in the tank, we have you're going to have a, you know, this, this stock is going to go down with it. Okay. Google uh, stops being so gentle in their approach, having workers come back to the office. All these big tech companies and companies in general are having trouble getting employees to come back to the office. Okay, they don't want them all working from home. And, you know, it's a problem because there's no collaboration or the collaboration is much more difficult. That's what they say anyways. So Google has changed their policy saying that their performance reviews is also going to be taken into consideration attendance. So that's going to be included in all their performance reviews now. Companies are trying to get workers to come back and workers don't want to. J.P. Morgan's model says if the bond market is correct, stocks should drop 20%. Now, what do we bitch? I just talked about that, didn't I? Every, I mean, I, I, every Friday I go over the numbers and we have an inverted yield curve. That's what they're talking about. They're talking about bonds and interest rates moving up and yields on bonds going up and the stock market going up, and that's not normal. Interest rates going up usually means the stock market eventually falls. And that's, that's what their model is telling them. I've been telling you this has been a very unusual time that we're in. And one more, one more, everybody. BNP says quantitative tightening will start to bite with a 10% hit to liquidity. Meaning that quantitative tightening, interest rates rising by the Fed, is going to start affecting liquidity in the various markets. Therefore, they didn't say the market's going to go down, but that's the inference from what they're saying. Interesting stuff, eh, people. Be very careful. I'm Steve Peasley, and this completes another Invest Talk program. Justin Klein and I thank you for listening. And we encourage you to tell your friends and family member about our free podcast downloads, as we do every day. And if you get yours at iTunes, please rate us. You can get it at iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. But in, in iTunes, you can rate us. And if you do rate us we'll and have a question, we'll make sure we'll get to it right away. We promise. Okay? And remember... A programming note, Justin's still on vacation. He went to Europe for the first time in his life. And uh, he, he'll be back, not next week, but the week after. I will have a, I have something. I have to go to Philadelphia next week, so I'll be out. But we're going to have the best of caller questions, a compilation proga- podcast for next week. All You'll find it very interesting, I'm sure. Independent thing and shared success. This is the best talk. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Invest Talk is a trademark of KPP Financial. Because of the nature of the interactive dialogue inherent in the format of this program, it's important for the listener to understand that not all comments made will apply to them. Specifically, nothing said shall be taken to be investment advice, or shall statements on this program be considered an offer to buy or sell security. Because such advice is rendered solely on an individual basis, and at times will require that the investor review a prospectus before investing. Invest Talk.